I need to get my notes because uh, I don't want to forget what I'm going to say today. Okay, so it is um, Tuesday. It is another Trope Tuesday video that we're doing today. And um, what do I want to talk about today? What I want to talk today about today is something that actually predates Romance Your Brand. Um, I want to talk about backlist analysis. So I just did another video. So today I'm going to upload two videos. And the other video, and there is now stomping around upstairs, but that's okay. Um, the other video that I did was a trope, I'm going to, I need to come up with a better name, but it was a trope tag. So if you have participated in any tag videos here on YouTube, um, you know, the idea is that there's like a set of questions and you go through them and it's kind of consistent and standard. Uh, this is, that's not exactly what I did, but, um, what I did was I took one of my series, my Seals Undone series, and I listed... I'll show you my list because I actually read it off and I listed all of the tropes um, for each book that I could think of and then I introduced the series and I listed you know the like I just read the title and then the tropes that's all that I did as I went down that list um, it was it was a lot of fun it was harder than I thought it was gonna be which is what I said in the video at the end um, I find this really easy like I'm just talking to author friends right um, trying to do something a little bit more I don't know slick or professional is it's a challenge so if you are also if you're daunted by the thought of doing video um, I get it because some kinds of video are more daunting for me than others. Okay, so I want to talk about this idea of backlist analysis because it, there, there is, it is very tempting to look at something like The Trope Project, which you can find at thetropeproject.com, um, and we're now, we're now up over 1,300 responses which is amazing and the trope project is going to continue through to June at which point I will make all of the raw data available and I want as much raw data I mean originally my goal was like a hundred people I wanted to play like a family feud thing I wanted to say a hundred romance readers say um and then we crossed a thousand and so now like honestly I would love five thousand or ten thousand responses by the time we get to June so the more data the better when we get to the end of June and I shut the survey down, I will make all the raw data available for anybody to play around with, who anyone who's a statistician. That's that's the update on the Trope Project. But right now I want to talk about how I use it as backlist analysis, how I combine trope research or, or market research, which I talked about in last week's video, how I combine the idea of that with backlist analysis, which is a little bit about taking stock of what you've done so far and also being really honest and, and true to yourself because I, I'm never going to suggest that you stop writing your core story idea. Like at no point from anything that I say in the Trope Project do I ever want you to be like, well, my favorite, the things that I want to write are not the most favorite tropes, so I maybe I should change and I... I don't want everyone to write the grumpy one is softer, the sunshiny one books like every single time. That that's not the takeaway from all of this. Um, I maybe what I should do is actually grab it and pull it to YouTube. But hopefully people don't mind jumping platforms a little bit because I'm not the most like I, I'm not platform loyal. So if you if you want to hear a really in depth discussion about what I think about backlist analysis. Then I'm gonna point you to um, a podcast that I recorded with my sister. It's called The Sister Cast. The Trope Project, The Sister Cast. You see, I kind of have like a, a little bit of a naming convention trend going on there. So if you go to thesistercast.com or you search for The Sister Cast on Google Play, on iTunes, on um, Spotify, we're, we're everywhere. There are four episodes, they're called the Marketing Breakout Sessions, and they're like buried like around episode, I don't know, 21, something like that. Um, there are four of them. And in it, I talk about, it's basically, it's a version of a workshop that I gave to the Toronto Romance Writers, which is my home uh, chapter, my local romance writing group. Um, 
thumping overhead. I hope it's not so loud on this video that I have to redo it, but time will tell. Anyway, um, and in it I talk about, it's very hard to move forward and know a, what you should write next. What What is the next front list project you should write? Um, and I don't know where it was. There was some yelling at children. Okay. So, uh, that front list, back list, right. The Before you can know what you should move forward and write next, what your next front list project should be, it's very smart to do a back list analysis and understand, A, what do you have that you can already leverage more than you're currently leveraging, right? What bunch of standalones can you group together as a series? That's something that I talk about. I talk about the importance of metadata. I talk about the importance of metadata in ebook sales, which is also something I talked about in Romance Your Brand. Um, and then, and then I talk about new and different ways to think about how we we categorize our our books, which is the same as doing trope analysis. So. I did this today and I hope that um, if you have watched these videos I hope that you take up the challenge and you do your own and tag me on it and then that would be a lot of fun um, and and after you come up with a list of your own tropes look at them and see what jumps out so I have like I have two epistolary books I have two star-crossed lover books um, uh, I have I have like opposites attract and my my favorite one is probably, like, not my favorite book, but my favorite trope that I wrote in this series, the Seals and Dunn series, is Lovers to Enemies to Lovers Again. Um, because I love that that's a twist on Friends to Lovers or Lovers to Enemies or, you know, um, Second Chance Romance like that. It just adds another beat to it. It, it. it makes it a little bit new again. Another one that I saw talked about on Twitter is um, Frenemies to Lovers is a really good mashup of Friends to Lovers and Enemies to Lovers. And there are some really good examples of books that they, they, they read as really fresh because they are like, they're just a little bit different. So if you can look back at your back catalog and see a little success like that, that might spark a, uh, an idea for your front list that if you didn't look back and you didn't kind of get that little ego boost. Yeah, I did it. I, I managed to nail it once before. Surely I can do this again. Um, so it has that kind of ego boost value in and of itself. But you can also start to see some trends. And you can see, like, I don't have a single, um, I don't actually have a single grumpy one and soft for the sunshiny one here. And yet that's what I'm writing right now for my first Kincaid's and Pine Harbor book. But like, that's not gonna be my core brand because it's not the story that I've told repeatedly in the past. Um, the, one of the consistent things about almost all of these books, except for Fall, hmm, I don't even know which one. Well, Fall Fast, it, they meet for the first time at the start of the book. And same with Fall Deep, those two. But every single other, oh no, and Fall Easy. They, so three out of the ten books are strangers on page one. But the rest of them, a very consistent thing that I see is that I really like to write books where the couple knows each other and has a past. And, um, and that is really good data to do, to, to learn from backlist analysis. So um, that's one thing. Um, to, you know, not just see the tropes that you've written, but also see other trends or other story structures that you've chosen. Um, and then the other is, hang on, I have to put my computer down because I'm not thinking clearly. Okay. So, uh, so if you do this kind of thing, one, um, it will help remind you of what your core story is, help, it might provide some clarity with some distance from having written those books in the past. Um, and two, if, um, no, I totally lost my train of thought. That's the problem with doing videos when your family is in the house. And I might just wrap this video up now, see if it's usable. No, we, we should probably have at least one more takeaway from it. Um, oh man, I wish this was live so you guys could like ask me questions. Um, hang on. People did ask me questions. So we're going to like open the old computer machine again. And we're gonna like, we're gonna we're gonna dig deep to the very end. Um, mm -hmm. 
Okay, so here's another here's another thing uh, where you can take the trope and now because all all book planning, all front list planning analysis, it's layered. It's not just tropes. It's also structure. It's also length. So here at the 10 minute and 40 second mark. No, it'll be a little shorter than that because I'm going to cut out the chunk for you to make it. Here at this, I don't know what point this is, um, but I will, I will find out and then Mel, I will let you know in the comments so you can jump to this for reference point. Um, I'm going to answer, I'm going to answer a viewer question. And the question was, um, in your book, you mentioned that doing a shorter book for the first in series, um, and then get longer as you progress. I, yeah. So, I mean, ideally what I say is, um, you want to have consistent length and it's okay if they get longer. I don't think you need to, I don't think you need to get progressively longer. If all of your books hit 65,000 words for each title, that's great. Um, but you can go 65, 75, 80. That's fine too. Or like if you're me, 65, 75, 80, 115. That one felt, that one honestly felt a little long for the series. That one is, it's one of these. Love on the outskirts of town. You can see how thick it, well, you can't maybe it's because it's dark. But let me move some of these. Look at, you can see the progression here. That one being a mess. Okay. So you can see this one's 90, this one's 75, 90, 115. Um, like this is okay. But then when you release the last book in the series, it is an unsatisfying read to drop back like this. And even though these two are the same length, the fact that I had these two big fat ones, the behemoths in the middle, made it a problem to drop back. So that's, this is why I say, this is why I say be as consistent. There's a glare there. That's why I say be as consistent as possible because, um, I don't know, maybe they look fine. They're all big books, like, but the shorter you get, the, the more important it is. Like if you're trying to stick to like 50,000 words, then you go 85 and then you jolt back to 50. It's not going to be a satisfying read. So someone, so the question, the second part of that question was, if you have a, a, tr a Christmas story, right? Or if you have like a really tropey story and there just isn't as much conflict, what do you do? So sometimes we all need to acknowledge that we are human and that not all of our ideas are going to be like perfectly commercial, on the money, you know, and, and cut yourself some slack. So you write a shorter book. A, my first answer is it's fine. But B, my second answer is if you're asking yourself this before you hit publish, I'm not going to give you permission to publish something that you know out of the gate you're going to be apologetic for. And this is like, oh, this is a little aside, but anytime you ever find yourself being like apologetic about a publishing thing, like cut yourself off, like mm, smack, like no, because that negativity, being apologetic about a publishing choice is a form of negativity and that negativity spirals and it's just, it's like a red flag, like don't even bother buying this book. I have, I have done that. We've all done that. Don't do it anymore. Um, but two, so two, if you are finding yourself apologetic about something like, oh, it's just a Christmas story. So it's a little bit shorter. Um, get to the, get to the bottom of why you're talking about it like that and see if you put on your acquisitions hat, if you put on your publisher hat and you say, if another author, if I, if I was a publisher and I was publishing another author, would I accept that answer from them? And if no, why are you accepting it from yourself as the primary author in your publishing house? Does that make sense? If the answer that you as a publisher or you as an acquisitions editor would say is make the book longer, then you know what to already do. Layer in a subplot, add in. So a subplot is like three to six scenes um, about a secondary plot, right? And you can layer those in completely, you know, 
not independent, but like it's a, it is it's an independent plot line. So you can layer that in, and maybe I'll do a separate video about how to do that. Um, although I'm sure there are like better YouTubers than to talk about that kind of craft stuff than I am. But that's what I would do. If you find yourself having written like 60, 70, 80, 80, 80, and then you're coming back to 60, learn from my mistakes. Get that last book up to 80. It's what readers will expect. Um, if you want, if, if, you know what I mean, right? Like it's okay if you don't, but it's really better if you do. Does that make sense? Okay. So anyway, that is trope, the trope project update number three, which is there's like a, there's a collision here between the trope project and the marketing breakout sessions that um, my sister and I did on the sister cast www.thesistercast.com and um, I really hope that some of you will do a trope tag which like I did so literally you know if you can make it even like I did where it ripped out of the printer and then you had to fold it to be super professional uh, <laughs> then like we'll be twins and that will be a lot of fun um so watch my other trope video I'm going to link to it right somewhere here and um it's very short and you can do it too and you can put it on Facebook if you're not a YouTube person and you could take me there or you can take me here and I would love to see it and I will be back next week with more trope talk